Maximum likelihood and the binomial distribution. That's what we'll talk about today. StatQuest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StatQuest. Today we're going to talk about maximum likelihood for the binomial distribution and it's going to be clearly explained. Note, this stat quest follows up on the stat quest, maximum likelihood, clearly explained, as well as the stat quest, probability versus likelihood. And lastly, this stat quest assumes you are already familiar with the binomial distribution. If not, check out the stat quest, the binomial distribution and test, clearly explained. In the stat quest on the binomial distribution and test, we use the binomial distribution, aka this nasty looking thing, to determine if, in general, people like orange Fanta more than grape Fanta. In the context of this problem, x is the number of people who preferred orange Fanta. In this case, x equals 4. n is the total number of people we asked about whether they preferred orange Fanta or grape Fanta. In this case, n equals 7. And p is the probability somebody would randomly choose orange Fanta over grape Fanta. In this case, p equals 0 0.5. Altogether, the left side of the equation reads, the probability of x, the number of people who say they prefer orange Fanta, given n, the number of people we asked, and p the probability of picking orange Fanta. Then we just plugged the numbers in and chugged away at the math. And the probability that four out of seven people would randomly prefer orange Fanta is 0 0.273. Now, if we want to calculate the likelihood of P equals 0 0.5, then all we need to do is rearrange the left side of the equation. That is to say, we change this to this. Now the left side of the equation reads, the likelihood of P, the probability of picking orange Fanta, given N, the number of people we asked, and X, the number of people who say they prefer orange Fanta. The right side of the equation, however, stays the same. And this is now the likelihood of p equals 0 0.5, given that 4 out of 7 people would randomly prefer orange Fanta. Just a reminder, when we calculate likelihoods for p, we can plug in different values for it. While the observed data, n equals 7 and x equals 4, remains fixed. In other words, we can calculate the likelihoods for different values of p given that 4 out of 7 people said they preferred orange Fanta. For example, the likelihood of P equals 0 0.25, given that 4 out of 7 people said they preferred orange Fanta, is... Plug and chug, plug and chug, plug and chug... 0 0.058. The likelihood of P equals 0 0.25 given that 4 out of 7 people would randomly prefer orange Fanta, is less than 0 0.273, the likelihood when P equals 0 0.5. We can also calculate the likelihood of P equals 0 0.57, given that 4 out of 7 people said they preferred orange Fanta. Plug and chug, plug and chug, plug and chug. And we get 0 0.294. The likelihood of P equals 0 0.57, given that 4 out of 7 people would randomly prefer orange Fanta, is greater than 0 0.273, the likelihood when P equals 0 0.5. We can plot the likelihood with a bunch of different values for P between 0 and 1. Ta-da! This peak is the maximum likelihood. The slope of the curve at the peak is zero. That means we can solve for the value for p that results in the maximum likelihood by finding where the derivative, i.e. the slope, 
is equal to zero. So let's do it. Here's the original likelihood function with n equals seven and x equals four. The first thing we do is take the log of the likelihood function. We do this because the original likelihood function and its log will both reach the maximum using the same value for p, and it's way easier to take the derivative of the log of the likelihood function compared to the original function. To see this, here is a plot of the likelihood function. And here is the log of the likelihood function. Both have peaks at the same value for p. The log function turns the multiplication into addition. And it turns the exponents into multiplication. If this log stuff is freaking you out, well, don't freak out. Just watch the stack quest on logs. Now we're ready to take the derivative. But first, because we are running out of room, we'll move this to the top of the screen. Okay, now we take the derivative with respect to p. This first part doesn't contain p at all, so its derivative equals zero. The derivative of the second part is just four times one over p. The derivative of this last part is a little tricky since we need to apply the chain rule. So we start with seven minus four times the derivative of the log of one minus p. And we multiply that by the derivative of one minus p. Then we simplify and plug it in. Bam! Now we set the derivative to zero because we want to find the peak where the slope of the curve equals zero. And that will tell us which value for p gives the maximum likelihood. Now multiply both sides by p times one minus p. Now multiply out four times one minus p. Now combine negative four p and negative three p. Then just solve for p. The maximum likelihood estimate for p is 4, the number of people who preferred orange Fanta, divided by 7, the total number of people we asked. Double bam! Okay, we just solved for the maximum likelihood estimate for p when we have data for x and n. However, we don't actually need data to determine a general formula for the maximum likelihood for p. This formula will give us the maximum likelihood estimate for p when there are x successes in n trials. That's how you say it using fancy statistics lingo. We'll start with the original likelihood function. However, this time all of the variables p, x, and n are unknown. Just like before, we take the log of the likelihood function because it will make solving for the derivative way easier. And just like before, the log function turns the multiplication into addition and the exponents into multiplication. Now we're ready to take the derivative. And just like before, because we were running out of room, we will move this to the top of the screen. Okay. Now we take the derivative with respect to p. The first part does not contain p, so its derivative is zero. The derivative of the second part is just x times one over p. And just like before, we have to use the chain rule to figure out the derivative of this last part. So we start with n minus x times the derivative of the log of one minus p. And we multiply that by the derivative of one minus p. Then we simplify and plug it in. Then, just like before, we set the derivative to zero. Note, different values for n and x will result in different curves but the slope is still zero at the maximum likelihood. 
Now multiply both sides by p times 1 minus p. Now multiply out x times 1 minus p. And now negative xp and positive xp cancel each other out. Then just solve for p. In this case, the maximum likelihood estimate for p is x, the number of successes, divided by n, the total number of trials. Bam! Some of you may be saying to yourself, duh, what's the big deal? The maximum likelihood estimate for p is just the average. That's obvious. Well, I agree. Once you know the solution, it's pretty obvious. But now we also have a mathematical proof that backs up our intuition. And to me, that's a very comforting thing. Triple bam! Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more of them, please subscribe. And if you want to support stat quest, well, click the like button below and consider buying one or two of my original songs. Alright, until next time, quest on!